Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're back on the Muncie four-speed out of the 65 Chevelle. Uh, we, uh, last time you saw this, we were tearing it apart, trying to figure out what the nickel was all about. They had glued into the front of the counter shaft. Kind of figured out what was going on there. Uh, we got some parts ordered in. They showed up. So let's get this thing put back together. Okay guys, I haven't done one of these Muncie's since I was in high school, uh, so I needed a refresher course on you know, how to do it and not pull my hair out trying to put needle bearings in the counter shaft and everything else, because I, I do remember back that long ago, it was very frustrating. So I watched some YouTube videos, I found an excellent guy on, uh, it's, his channel's called Gearbox Video. His name is Paul, I think he's out of Florida, and he also sells parts out of fivespeeds.com, and that's where we got the parts here. And if you give the guy a call, Great advice. Uh, he helped me out a little bit. I talked to him just for a few minutes about some parts that were out of stock. They came back in, we got them, and we're putting the thing back together. So Gearbox video on YouTube and fivespeed.com for parts. I'll put, uh, try to remember to put the link in my description. So um, I'm gonna bring you in close and I'll show you the parts we got to uh, fix the, the problems that weren't fixed the last time this thing was torn apart. Okay, on the last video, you guys saw this mid plate was pretty chewed up and we needed to get a new one. So we did, you, you can see right here uh, where the notch is, um, it chewed it up. That's where the counter shaft spun and it just destroyed it. So there was no, no nickel was gonna fix that. So also on the edge here, uh, it's pretty chewed up along this edge right here. And uh, so it looks like they lost a gear or something broke and it bounced around and they're pretty good. So we needed a new mid plate. We got that from fivespeed.com. Uh, and uh, it's right here. I think uh, at the, it was $105, which was a really good deal. It's billet aluminum machined. Uh, the only change you have to do to your case is this, uh, this dowel right here is 5 16 instead of quarter inch. You just take a 5 16 bit and you drill your, uh, your, your tail shaft and your main case out and that's it and it'll fit right in. We also picked up some gaskets and seals from him. We didn't need any hard parts so, and we're on a tight budget. So, you know, I wasn't looking to change a bunch of parts and a lot of these look really good like some of these parts had been changed out. So we got the gasket set from him. I guess uh, he invented this or came up with this and he has it manufactured. They've got a nice little uh, sealing uh, surface on here like silicone. And these, the gasket sets and the seals are all really nice. So um, the other thing we got was the counter shaft. Now the counter shaft, I've already got it in, but uh, here's the original counter shaft and you can see it's very discolored. And we got a new one of those and it's designed to be bolted directly to the mid plate here. So it cannot move forward or back and it cannot spin. So uh, right where the notch is, it's, whole, it's drilled and tapped and you put it in and you just uh, torque that down and it will not move. So you don't have to worry about it, that again. Now the owner stopped by yesterday and we were talking about the transmission. He said, well, will this fix the leaky problem out of the front of the case where the counter shaft was? And uh, so I tried the, counter, the brand new counter shaft in the case and it, I could not slide it into the hole you know, without hitting a, tapping on with a mallet. So the, uh, this original counter shaft, I mean, it slid right in. It would fall all the way through, you know, it's, and stop at the, the bigger part here. So uh, I'm fairly confident I had to tap it in. So, and I did put some sealer up in there and tap it in. So I'm pretty confident that we're gonna stop the leak by getting this repair. So let's move over. I already done a bunch of pre-assembly. You guys don't need to watch me do that, you know, putting it together and getting frustrated. But uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing buttoned back up and get it ready to go back in the car once we finish everything else. Okay, I already got the counter shaft in. I've got the reverse gear in with its little uh, shim in there. I've got the input shaft. So we're about ready. I got the uh, gasket uh, kind of just set with some uh, Permatex high tack, just a couple little daubs so it won't move around. And I think we're about ready to put the main assembly in. Uh, I think I've got everything. I don't think I screwed up. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get this dropped in real quick. Look at that. Let's make sure everything's going to turn properly. Feel 
it's pretty good. I need to get the uh, bolt in for the counter shaft and get that tightened up. I'm going to tap this down a little bit and then we'll get that set up. Okay, we got the uh, counter shaft bolt in, uh, put some thread locker that comes with a kit on it, torqued it to 40, 45 foot pounds. So we're ready to go there. I've got the gasket stuck down with some high tack so it won't move. So when we put the uh, tail shaft housing on, uh, we don't have to worry about sliding around. I got the reverse gear in. Now this reverse gear is a little chewed up here, but uh, I drove the car, it went into reverse okay, and we are on a tight budget on this Muncie rebuild. So it'd be nice to put all kinds of new parts into it, but we we're basically just trying to stop a leak. And that entailed, you know, having to get a mid plate and a counter shaft. So, and all, all the seals and gaskets. So uh, I think it's gonna be okay. So um, I also replaced the Speedo gear on the, uh, the tail shaft here. The, the one that was on here was nylon and uh, or some sort of green plastic and it literally just slid off by hand. I mean, I didn't even have to try it, it almost fell off. So I don't know why you'd put a plastic one on there. It, it's obviously going to slip and not give you accurate reading. So I put a new one on. I got that from fivespeed.com as well. The, they didn't sponsor this at all. They, uh, I just think they make really good parts and reasonable price and they shipped them out right away. And they've got great advice over there. So uh, I just heated it up and uh, slid it on and let it cool. Now, uh, if you watch Paul's videos, you'll see that uh, this speedo has to either go up here on this end or down here, depending on which side your speedometer cable enters the Muncie uh, tail shaft. So, and I didn't even know they came in on two different sides, but they do, and that determines where this goes on a 27 spline. I guess a 32 spline, you just drop it right in the center. But, so let's see if we can get this tail shaft on here. I've got it in reverse. I've got some uh, grease kind of holding everything together and it slid all the way back like it's supposed to on the detent. And I think we're ready to go. Slide this down. A little love tap here. That looks good. Now we'll tap this in. That's not good. All right, I missed. Let's see if we can find it here. I think it's right here. There we go. All right, let's see if it goes in out of reverse. Yep, it goes in and out of reverse, so we're good. All right, good deal. All right, all we gotta do is drop the bolts in. I'm gonna put a little bit of sealer on them. Uh, make sure these, none of these bolts actually go into the case so they won't leak, but I wanna put a little, uh, little Loctite on them just to make sure they don't come out. And we'll get those torqued on and then we'll move the case back onto the bench and finish putting it together. Okay, let's get the gear selectors in. this right here. Make sure those are landing where they're supposed to. That looks pretty good right there. Get the dowel lined up. That feels pretty good. Get a couple of bolts in here. And we'll give it a quick test. Make sure it shifts properly. Good there. Yep. Feels good there. All right. Put the rest of the bolts in, get them tightened up. And the only thing left to do is the speedometer gear. Okay, I lied. Got the uh, reverse gear pin to put back in. It's tapered. Small end goes down. Feels pretty tight. That works good. Let's get this phenometer gear in and then the shifter. 
Okay, the speedometer gear, uh, I don't know what this is, housing or fitting. Uh, we had to get a new one because this is the original one. As you can see right there, there's like a piece of brass that they've driven in there um, so you couldn't use it. I tried to drive it out to see if we could salvage it, but uh, I couldn't get it out of there. So we had to chuck it and we got a brand new one from uh, fivespeed.com and it uh, comes with a nice little seal in there. Uh, it comes with an O-ring. Uh, the bolt, lock washer, and the retainer. So that was, it's a, you know, it's a great deal. Um, also got a new speedometer uh, gear to engage the one on the main shaft there. Now, uh, the one on the main shaft and this one didn't really matter in this case because uh, uh, we're putting Dakota digital gauges in this and the speedometer is uh, calibrated at the speedometer. So you don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, what your rear end gears are, what your uh, tire diameter and all that kind of stuff. You just basically measure out a, a, a mile, I believe, and then you just program it that way. So I'm going to get some uh, assembly lube on this. We're going to get this put in, and then that should be about it. After we get the shifter on, we can uh, set it aside, and it'll be ready to go. Get some lube in here so that O-ring doesn't get cut. Just like that. Okay, let me get this tightened up and then we're gonna get the shifter back on and uh, that should be about it. Okay, I got distracted there for a second, had a little visitor in the shop. I heard Jake barking. Um, here he is right here. A little visitor in the shop. It's a king snake. It's a good one. He's about three and a half feet long. You can go hide underneath the GTO. Eat squirrels and kill rattlesnakes. So uh, now we can get back. We're off snake chasing, chasing snake duty away from the shop. That's a nice little king snake. Uh, good size one, actually one of the bigger ones I've seen around here lately. So uh, I got the shifters going back on. I've got uh, a drift in this the, the neutral hole right here. So they, they're all lined up. And this shifter was adjusted really well uh, before, so I'm not going to mess with it. All I just want to make sure that uh, everything's nice and loose uh, and not binding, and it feels really good. So we can just go ahead and get the nuts on, on the shifter arms here, get some lock washers, and just get all those nuts on there and get them tightened up. And that's going to be about it. Now, I'd planned on putting, uh, I thought that we ordered a... Um, reverse light switch because this car didn't have one on it. They just kind of stuck this Muncie in here. It was an automatic car originally. And they, they just kind of, you know, didn't do it all the way, I guess. Um, I won't say wrong, but, you know, a reverse light switch goes on back here. And so when you put it in reverse, it just depresses a button and turns the lights on, which, you know, it's kind of ha you know, nice to do. If I, When I do stuff, I like to do it right, um, you know, to make sure, especially this isn't mine. Um, so, but I certainly want uh, the car to function, everything to function on the car. So we're going to get these tightened up and I don't want to chase this thing around the bench trying to shift it, but I'll, I'll test it out a little bit. I got to put the drain plug in and then I'll hand tight uh, the fill plug because we're going to stuff put gear oil in it once it gets up in the car. And then uh, this thing's going to be about ready to go. Okay, all done. Looks pretty good, all nice and clean and back together. Okay guys, that just about wraps up my project for the day. It was kind of a long day, interrupted by a snake. And uh, you know, it took me a little while to get this back together, but I'm happy it's done. Uh, what'd you guys work on? Don't forget to send me those pics. Come on, get out there in that garage, shop, whatever, and get to work on your project in the yard, whatever. Send me pics. I'd love to see what's going on in your lives and be able to share it with everybody else. So we got the Muncie back together, although I am one, I'm a little concerned. I found a part that was left over, uh, and I'm a little worried about it. Um, it was a nickel. I'm just kidding. I'm sure they had, were on a tight budget, and they did what they, they thought they could do to try to stop that counter shaft from spinning. But I'm really happy we're able to get the new parts. we got the mid plate and the counter shaft, and that counter shaft fit in that main case really tight. So I'm really confident that it's not going to leak. Plus, I put a little sealer in there uh, when I slid the shaft in. So... I'm really confident it's not going to leak. Uh, 
fingers crossed. I shouldn't jinx myself. But it all went together well. It's uh, shifting good, and uh, I have no problems. The last thing we need to do is put a reverse light switch on it, and we're going to get that ordered, and I'll get that stuck on here so this car will have uh, reverse lights when you put it in reverse. So that's it for me. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.